Mr. B here. Stoichiometry relates the amount of reactants in a chemical reaction to the amount of products. In this video, I will explain how to use stoichiometry calculations to determine various quantities of reactants and products. The first practice problem is an example of a simple calculation. This question is asking how many moles of copper is produced if 5 moles of sodium is consumed. In this particular case, we are already beginning with the balanced equation where the molar ratio is 2 to 1 to 2 to 1. From the balanced equation, it is possible to create a fraction that relates the amount of sodium to the amount of copper. To create this fraction, use the following technique, where the amount of copper is unknown and the amount of sodium is given. Therefore, the fraction should be 1 over 2, where when writing the fraction, always write the coefficient for the unknown as the numerator and the coefficient for the given, in this case sodium, in the denominator. At this point, it's a simple matter of multiplying the fraction that was determined, in this case the fraction is one half, by the number of moles that were given, which was five moles. Had moles not been given in the practice problem, then moles must be calculated. At any rate, simply multiply five moles times one half and the amount of copper produced during this particular reaction will be 2.5 moles. When I teach this topic in my own classes, I often have my students copy down the following steps. Where, after balancing the equation, write down a molar ratio. Of course, in this particular instance, the molar ratio would be 2 to 1 to 2 to 1. Then, from the practice problem, locate the unknown. In this case, we're asked how many moles of copper. So therefore, in this equation, the copper is the unknown. From this unknown, simply use the coefficient of the unknown as a numerator in the fraction to be created. The denominator of the fraction will be represented by the coefficient of the substance that's known. In this case, we're given five moles of sodium. Therefore, the coefficient for sodium is two, and the denominator in the fraction will be two. Then simply multiply by the moles if given. If moles are not given, then moles must be determined using the mole calculation. So multiply the moles times the fraction, and the final answer will represent the moles of the unknown. You are, you are watching, watching a master, a master at work. work. <laughs> now let's attempt a slightly more complex practice problem. How many grams of silver nitrate are required to react with excess magnesium chloride to produce three moles of magnesium nitrate? The first step in solving this practice problem is to write a balanced chemical equation where silver nitrate reacts with magnesium chloride to produce magnesium nitrate and a precipitate of silver chloride. To balance this equation, 
simply place a two in front of the silver nitro and a two in front of the silver chloride. The next step is to write a proper molar ratio. The molar ratio will be two to one to one to two. From the practice problem, the following information may be gleaned. The unknown in this case will be the silver nitrate. And the known in this case will be the magnesium nitrate. So the fraction to create based on this information will be the coefficient of silver nitrate which is 2 divided by the coefficient for magnesium nitrate which is 1. Now multiply the number of moles of magnesium nitrate that is given in the practice problem. 3 times the fraction 2 over 1, which will equal 6 moles of silver nitrate. Finally, to determine the number of grams required, simply rearrange the mole calculation to find mass. In this case, the mass is equal to the number of moles times the molar mass of the compound. It was calculated that six moles of the compound was required. And the molar mass of the compound, the molar mass of silver nitrate, is 170 grams per mole. 170 times six equals 1,020 grams. So in order to produce three moles of magnesium nitrate, 1,020 grams of silver nitrate is required. You are watching, you are watching a master, a master at work. For a slightly more complex practice problem, consider the following. How many grams of water will be formed during the combustion of 150 grams of octane. The first step in solving this practice problem will be to write a balanced chemical equation where two moles of octane reacts with 25 moles of oxygen gas to produce 16 moles of carbon dioxide and 18 moles of water vapor. The next step is to write the molar ratio, 2 to 25 to 16 to 18, where the molar ratio represents the coefficients in the balanced equation. At this point, we should return to the original practice problem and determine what is being given and what is unknown. In this problem, the given is the octane where 150 grams of the compound is actually given. The unknown in the practice problem is the water where we are looking for the mass or grams of water. From this information a fraction may be determined from the molar ratio where the numerator of the fraction will contain the coefficient of the substance that is unknown, in this case, water. And the denominator in the fraction will contain the coefficient of the substance that is known, in this case, the octane. To write the fraction, simply write 18 over 2, which can be reduced to 9 over 1. 
diffraction is a function of a molar ratio. Therefore, before the calculation may be completed, we should find the number of moles of the octane. In the practice problem, we're given 150 grams of octane. Using the mole calculation, the number of moles may be easily determined simply by dividing 150 mass of octane, which is 114 grams per mole. In this case, the number of moles of octane are equal to 3.12 mole. Now that the number of moles of octane have been determined, we may now use the fraction to determine the number of moles of water produced. Simply multiply the number of moles of octane, 3.12 mole, times the fraction, which is 18 over 2 or 9 over 1. By doing so, we're now traveling across the arrow from the reactant side of the equation to the product side. 3.12 mole times 9 moles of water over 1 mole of octane is equal to 28.1 moles of water. After determining the moles of water, determining the mass of water is quite simple. If we use the mole calculation and solve for mass, we generate the following calculation where mass is equal to 28.1 mole times 18 grams per mole, which is the molar mass of the water. Remember, in finding the mass of the water, do not use the 18 in front of the water in the balance equation. That number has already been used in the fraction. 28.1 mole times 18 grams per mole will give a final value or answer of 505.8 grams of water. You are watching a master at work. work, 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 work.